This video is designed to go through how to complete assignment two, which is a source interpretation. So what you're going to see in this particular assignment is three images. Then you're going to be asked to complete two tasks in response to one of the two topics. Either you're going to be asked to describe the role of government when it comes to the sources, or you're going to be asked to describe the role of the individuals when it comes to those sources. Here are some examples of some of the sources you might encounter. For example, political cartoons that have irony and many literary components. You might also be asked to examine charts and graphs with mathematical data. You're going to have to look at trends. Or you might be given photographs. They can be both historical or contemporary. So in this assignment, there is no introduction or conclusion. This is a four paragraph writing assignment. So in paragraph one, you're going to analyze the first source provided. You're going to describe what do you see. Describe all of the important information found in the source. Are there important facts, people, or symbols? We're going to go through some examples so you know how to break down a source. If it was a political cartoon, you're going to look at all of the different important components. For example, is there any speech? What is he saying? Now, rather than just requoting what he says, you can describe what he's saying and what he means by it. You're going to look at things like facial expressions, or are there any symbols? In this particular source, you can see that the bird-like character is wearing an American flag hat, so he must represent the United States, and his content look must symbolize that he's quite happy with his decision. Whereas in the background, we have a character that looks like a woodpecker or a vulture of some kind, and he's wearing a Nazi swastika on the side of his body. This indicates that this is probably symbolic of Hitler. Then you're going to look at any symbolism. That bird in the back that symbolizes Hitler is chopping down all of the trees. And you'll notice that the trees include names like England and Poland and Norway and Greece. So symbolically, this bird is going down, taking over all of these countries. And the bird wearing the American hat is sitting there quite happy and content because he doesn't feel like this is really affecting him in any way. And he argues that likely when this bird gets to his tree, he'll probably be tired and leave him alone. Now let's look at another political cartoon. Here we have all of the provinces with the big word yes all over them with the exception of Quebec. Now, if we take a look at the title or the context, we'll see that there's a date included. So you'd have to look at all of the different details in the source. And in this one, it says 1942. So something must have happened in order for all of the provinces to say yes on something, but Quebec to say no. You're also going to look at any symbolism. This is a map of Canada, and it's all the provinces, not any of the territories. So there's got to be some type of reference going on to something historical. And of course, you're going to look at the text that's included. If it's a piece of propaganda, there is going to be a lot of literary devices that are included. For example, let's take a look at the facial expression. So we have on the top frame people looking really angry and upset, where the shopkeeper's kind of looking like he doesn't know what to do. Then we have in the bottom frame the same situation, but all three people look quite happy and content. We're also going to look at the setting. This is happening in a grocery store. So clearly this has to do with food. And then finally, of course, we're going to look at the text. So at the top frame, people are unhappy because there's no rationing. At the bottom, there's rationing and everyone looks happy. And then in the center, it describes that rationing means a fair share for all. So you're going to discuss rationing and what this must have to do with times of crisis. If you get a photograph, you're going to do the same process. You're going to look at any of the details. So for example, in this photograph, we see that it's an older time. Of course, 1942 is in the title, but also we see that they're wearing uniforms. So these must be soldiers. We also see that they are indigenous soldiers. So that's going to play a role in what we're discussing in our source interpretation. And then, of course, when we look at the caption, it not only names the date, but it says who these were, which is the Navajo Code Talkers. So in this particular source, you're going to describe the historical information that would be relevant to whatever you're studying at the time. 
perhaps if you're getting a photograph in front of you, sometimes this can seem a little bit more difficult, but you're going to follow the same process. You're going to look at the caption and the dates, the location or the setting. You're going to notice that this is taking place on a street or sidewalk. And of course, you're going to notice that these are women that are protesting. And you can see that they have signage that says votes for women the same as men. Now, if you get a graph or a chart, you need to look at a couple different things. The first thing is, of course, the title. What is the graph telling us? So who's the information about? This is about the Canadian government and their spending. Then we need to look at important data. So first, we're going to look at trends. If it has a timeline at the bottom, you're going to look at the first to the last date, and you're going to look at whether the numbers increased or decreased. Now, in this particular graph, the numbers really haven't fluctuated from the beginning of the graph to the end. However, we do notice there are some high peaks in the graph. So you'll take a look at the corresponding date for that peak, and maybe you can discuss what's going on. For example, if this is national defense funds and national defense spending or spending on the military, we'll notice that it was highest during World War I and World War II and Vietnam. So again, the first thing you do is describe all of the important things that you see in the source. Then the second step is the overall message of the source. What is the source trying to communicate? What's the point? And then finally, you need to answer that first essay question that was provided. The source believes the government should, or the source believes the individual should. Now, of course, you're only given one of those two topics. So you have to read really carefully so that you answer the correct topic. Is it about the government or is it about the role of the individual? It's critical here that you don't put your own viewpoint. Sometimes it's tempting to give your own perspective on the issue that's being presented in the source. This mark is based on how well you can show me how much you understand the source's perspective. What did the source believe the government should do? What does the source believe the individual should do? So you're really looking at it from the source's perspective only. Don't worry, you'll get a chance to give me your own viewpoint later. Then you're going to follow that exact same process for paragraph two. So with source two, you're going to do the same thing. First, you're going to describe what you see, describe all of the important information and what does it mean? Tell me about it. Then you're going to tell me what is the overall message of the source? What is the source trying to communicate? And finally, you're going to answer the question. The source believes the government should or the source believes individuals should. Whatever the answer is, as long as you're taking it from the perspective of the source, whoever made the source or posted the source, rather than from your perspective. Again, leave out your own viewpoint. This mark is on your ability to understand someone else's viewpoint. Then you're going to repeat the same process for source three in paragraph three. It is important that you separate each source into its own paragraph. So first, you're going to describe what you see, describe all of the important information. You're going to tell me what is the overarching message and explain and then finally, you're going to answer the question. The source believes the government should or the source believes individuals should, depending on the topic. So let's look at a few examples. Here's some examples if the question was, what's the role of the individual? So of course, in the first source, you're going to describe all of the important elements. You're going to talk about the text where it says attack on all fronts, and you're going to look at who's included. You'll notice that not only soldiers are included, but we have tradespeople in the middle and women on the end. And what that will symbolize is that this source was trying to attract as many people as possible to join in the war efforts, even if you're not a soldier. So, of course, the role of the individual, according to this source, is that individuals should join in the war efforts in whatever way they can. All help is necessary. Let's look at source two. Of course, here we have a photograph with people holding placards or signs, and they're saying no conscription. So we're going to discuss the fact that during World War II, there was a conscription crisis and people were forced to join the military even though they didn't want to. Then, of course, you're going to describe that information because we see people protesting and marching against the government. So according to this source, individuals should stand up to the government when they feel as if something unfair is being asked of them 
or something unfair is happening in society, such as conscription. And then you could describe why they might feel that way. Now, if the topic was role of government, you'll do the same process. In source one, we have a photograph. It says in the caption for 1945, the Japanese signed surrender to end World War II. So of course, you're gonna describe what happened during this time, Japan being bombed in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. And of course, then you're gonna talk about the context that's happening in the source. They signed it because they were trying to prevent more lives lost in Japan. Then, of course, you're gonna talk about the role of government. So according to this source, the government should protect its citizens to the best of their ability by creating peaceful agreements and peaceful treaties with other countries to prevent war. If we take a source two, we see that this is a political cartoon. So we're going to look at the context at the top and it says, remember, one more lollipop and then you all go home. Of course, this is symbolism. We have a character in the middle and he's wearing a shirt that says the appeaser and he's giving these Nazi like sea creatures, lollipops, trying to make them happy. But of course, the sign appeaser on his chest means that really all he's doing is giving them a small little snack, but they're going to come back for more. And eventually, these Nazi-like sea creatures are going to kill him or eat him. So you're going to talk about all of the symbolism happening and what's the overarching message. And of course, the overarching message here is that it's not okay to appease evil sources because they're just going to come back and do bad things to you and everyone else as well. Then, of course, what is the role of government here? The role of the government is to make sure that countries are standing up to aggressive states and making sure they're standing up for their values so that countries like Nazi Germany cannot attack anyone else. Appeasement is bad. It's critical again in these three paragraphs that you don't include your own perspective. This is simply about what the author or the artist or the photographer was trying to exemplify by presenting this information. So now to take a look at what you've done so far, you have three sources and three paragraphs. Up until this point, you've answered question one. What does the source believe the role of the government is or the role of the individual is? So you're putting this into their perspective. I can actually mark this category based on what you've done so far. So when we take a look at that particular section of the mark, we're looking at your quality of interpretation of each source. Did you interpret it correctly? Did you understand it correctly? Then did you draw appropriate evidence? Were you able to discuss social studies? And then finally, did you understand the task, the role of the government or the role of the individual? Now, when we take a look at the mark, we can see that in order to get 100% of this category, which which is worth 40%, is where your interpretations insightful and comprehensive, your evidence or your social studies information was specific and accurate, and did you do a thorough and perceptive job at describing the answer to the question? Again, it is so critical that you answer this question for all three sources. If you don't, you can't score higher than 40% on this category. So you must make sure that you do this for all the sources. Then finally, in paragraph four, you're now going to look back at the assignment and you're going to answer question two. Now, this question is very similar to the questions that you've seen before, except you're going to put your own perspective in. And here's how you're going to do it. First, you're going to answer the question. I believe that the government should, or I believe that individuals should, and then you're going to answer the question. Now, how are you going to answer it? You're going to answer it according to the content in the three sources. I recommend you actually give me three answers here. So essentially, you're going to give me your opinion on source one, source two, and source three. So for example, you might say, I believe that the government should do their best to create peaceful treaties so that they can reduce war for their citizens. I also believe that the government should not appease aggressive states, but rather go in with strong military force to prevent strong states like Nazi Germany from taking over other countries. You can see how I gave an opinion on each one, but it was always answering the question, what do you think the government should do? Or what do you think an individual should do? 
After you've explained your answer to all three sources, it's really great if you can add additional information. Why do you believe that? Is there any historical or contemporary information that you could add? Do you believe that we should protest and stand up to the government because it's the individual's responsibility to do so? And then perhaps give me some modern day protests that are happening right now? And then finally, I like to reconnect it all back at the end of my paragraph to the question. Therefore, I believe individuals should, or I believe the government should, and then combine all of your answers into one. Once I've finished paragraph four, the marker can take a look at that. So they're gonna be looking for how well did you defend your position? Do you have a good quality of the argument? Now, if you answered the question pertaining to all three sources, you're gonna have a great quality of argument. And if you develop those by explaining, you're also gonna have quality evidence. So it's important to look at that your argument is logical and convincing. Your evidence is specific and accurate, and you've done a thorough job. You've really examined what you think the role of the government is or the role of the individual is. So in summary, what should you have completed at this point? You should have written four paragraphs. Paragraphs one, two, and three each analyzed the three sources and answered the first assigned question in every paragraph. And then in paragraph four, you've answered the second assigned question where you indicate you, what you believe the role of the government or the role of the individual is. Once you've done the entire paper, we're also gonna mark communication. So we're gonna look at how organized it is. Did it flow from one source to the next? And was it coherent? Did your sentences make sense? Do you have good sentence variety and word choice? Do you have good vocabulary? I like to recommend that you not only use social studies words, but you look at any words that seem very plain or easy and use a thesaurus to spruce them up. Did you use lots of capitals and periods? That's really critical. Take a look at each paragraph and see how many periods you have. If you only have one or two, perhaps you need to go in and do some editing. So to get 100% on this category, the writing needs to be fluent and purposefully organized. You have to have an engaging voice. You need to have precise vocabulary and confident control of sentence construction, grammar, and mechanics. Meaning that even if you have any errors, they're so inconsequential that I barely even notice. So let's take a look at some overarching formatting. First, there is no need to have a fancy title. Just name it assignment two. Second, the font should be simple and easy to read, but professional. Use Times New Roman, Arial, or Calibri. Don't use any fancy scripted fonts. You also want to keep the font size at 12. Don't try to trick us by increasing it to 14 or 16 because it just makes it look like a little kid's book. You want to make sure that it looks professional. You also want to make sure the entire document is double spaced and there's no extra spaces between the paragraphs. So when you generally look at all of the assignment, there's only one space per line. Then you want to make sure that each paragraph is indented. This will allow the reader to have a visual so that when they're reading, it helps with the organization and flow. And then finally, don't worry about any fancy footers or headers. Just put your name in the bottom because when you write that diploma exam, all the information is added at the bottom for you, except your name is replaced with an ID number. So now that you've checked it over and you've made sure you meet all the criteria, all you have to do is turn it in.